What's going on, Gifted Hands family? It's Elijah here bringing you another lesson, and today we're going to dive into some gospel harmony secrets, and we're going to talk about five essential gospel passing chords, progressions, and movements. We're going to have some chords, some progressions, and some movements that you can add to your playing um, that is just dope to learn all around. All right, so let's dive into it. So I'm going to use all of these, uh, or all of these passing chords and progressions are going to be in the key of A flat. And the song example we're going to use is, uh, is an old song, you know, it goes something like, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. So that's going to be our song example for today. We're going to use all five of these movements in that song. We're going to stuff them in there. We're going to find a way to make it work. All right. So uh, passing chord number one is going to be a secondary dominant. If you watch this channel, if you follow this channel for a while, this is one of the main passing chords that we talk about here. And it's because I feel like this is always the most common uh, passing chord or passing movement in gospel. So um, in Oh, How I Love Jesus, we can use it in a bunch of places. We can, let's see, let's just walk through. Oh, how I love Jesus, right? If that's the regular progression, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me, right? If that's how you're used to playing it, or that's the basic format uh, of the song, we can do one, Five, one. So, right? This two chord is a dominant chord that takes us to the five. So if we're going to the five, we know we can add a passing chord that's a fifth away from this five chord. One, two, three, four, five. Just B flat dominant. That'll take us to the five, okay? So, Secondary dominant five. How I love Jesus. And then so uh, actually let's let's take it a step back. Oh, how I love Jesus. Pass secondary dominant pass to the five. And then we're going back to the five, right? Jesus. So let's do. Jesus, right? So we can do G. We do that. So one. Something like that, which is just one, two, five. But instead of just playing, like going right to a dominant chord, something that I like to do is whatever dominant chord I'm going to play, I start off as started off as a suspended chord. So here we got a 13, a B flat 13 sus, right? And I'm gonna resolve it to a dominant chord. Right here, I'm gonna resolve it into like an altered dominant. And then go on to the next chord. Alright, so So that's how we can use secondary dominance, and that's going to be the first chord. The second essential gospel passing progression um, or movement, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a 2-5 progression, but we're going to do it a little bit different. Um, it's not going to be a basic 2-5. What we're going to do is we're going to stack um, dominant chords to create this cool, kind of out there sounding 2-5 progression, okay? So this is building on top of movement number one, which is a secondary dominant. So pretty much with a 2-5, essentially we're stacking two secondary dominants, right? So in the first example, we said if we're going to use the 2 to pass to the 5, right? Or a dominant chord, secondary dominant to get us to E flat. 
we can add, using a 2-5, we can add another dominant to pass us to the first dominant chord. So to make this make sense, one, if we're on the one, oh, how I five love G, it's us. If this is our secondary dominant to take us to the five, we can create a two, five to get us to this secondary dominant, right? So we already know that this B flat dominant passes to E flat. So when we're building a 2-5, essentially we're taking a secondary dominant and we're gonna add another secondary dominant on top of that. So what is a chord that's a fifth away from B flat that'll pass us to this chord? So F is a fifth away from B flat, right? So we can do F to B flat to E flat, all right? That'll be a 2-5 to E flat, right? Or secondary dominant passing to B flat, which B flat is a secondary dominant that passes to E flat. Okay, so we got, oh, how I love G, us. oh, how I love G. So, uh, oh, let's see, how I love G, us. What do it sound like? Oh, five, how I love Jesus. Secondary dominant that passes to the other secondary dominant going to the five. Okay. And so, like I said, all that is is a two five or like two secondary dominants stacked on each stacked on top of each other. The end, the end goal, like the target chord that we're trying to get to is the five chord, E flat, right? So we're building a two five to pass us to that E flat, but we're gonna make them all dominant chords. And the thing, when you're making these all dominant chords that's gonna make it sound the best is going to be a melody line that kind of connects everything. When you're using chords that are outside of the key that don't really belong to a key, a melody line is gonna glue everything together, make it sound much better, right? Um, so, oh, how I love Jesus. If that's my melody line, da, da, da. or we could do. Since our since we're, we're gonna go, oh how I love Jesus. Since that's our melody line, when we get to the five, maybe I just want to walk it now chromatically. To, to make it a little bit easier to move around, but two, or this is technically, you can think of this as our six, because we're in A flat. Six, two, five. Or six, two, five. Right? Something like that. And that's another easy, easy way is using tritones. When you when you do something like this. A two five with all dominant chords. If you're using tritones in your left hand, it helps. It makes it easy to transition from chord to chord to chord to chord to chord because then you're just moving in half steps. This is our six. Here's our two. The five. Okay. Well, that's the second essential passing chord is going to be a two five pass using all dominant chords. All right, let's go into the next one, number three. So the third essential passing movement for gospel keys, for gospel harmony is going to be chromatic movements. There's a bunch of different ways that you can apply chromatic movements. You can use different chords, but um, in this context, we're probably going to use some dominant chords and then we'll see where else we can fit them in it, all right? So uh, we're staying at the top of the chorus. Oh, how I love me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. All right, 
So um, we're, we, we're, we can use them in two different places here. Or I just use them in two different places. So we got oh. Right there is one way we can use them. So when we say chromatic passes, what are we talking about? A chromatic movement on the piano is when you have one note, right? And you move up in half steps, not skipping any notes. Uh, half, half steps, um, semitones, whatever you want to call it, right? And it can be up the piano or down the piano, okay? So when we're using chromatic movements, we're moving in half steps, up or down. So I like to use this to walk into like passing chords. So not necessarily into the target chord, but I like to use it to add extra movement going into a passing chord. So once again, we're gonna use our B flat passing chord, that secondary dominant chord that we used as an example. We got one, oh, how I love G. Sus, going to the two, dominant, to the five, right? So I know I can use the B flat dominant as a passing chord, so I'm gonna um, combine that with chromatic with a chromatic movement to just give to fill up the space more okay so that's gonna sound like one how I love one and then I'm gonna walk chromatically into my B flat chord from the three so we're gonna go from three flat two and then I mean I could stay there three Walking down chromatically, all dominant chords. All right. Um, and this works with any chord, um, but it, I think it sounds great when you uh, lock in a specific chord voicing. So I know the two is going to be dominant that I'm using as a passing chord. So I'm going to use all dominant chords when I'm walking chromatically into it. And it works from above, as you heard, or you can go from below and work your way up. So, oh, how I love G. Oops, piano sticking. Oh, how I love you. Right? So, oh, how I love G. One dominant, walking it up, chromatic. I made the one dominant because I know I'm going to the two dominant. So we can start on the one and go there, right? Or we can start from somewhere just that doesn't make any sense. Oh, how I love G. That's, that's a little far, but. Oh, how I love G. All right, so right there, I start on the six. Six, flat seven. Seven, one, sharp one, two, finally got there to the five, right? Now, granted, that will sound super busy if you actually played that in the context of a song with a band. Um, and then plus you have to make this stuff fit rhythmically, but like literally you can walk your chords up or down chromatically from anywhere. Like if I wanted to, oh, how I love you. Like literally go up, 11, 11 semitones and start from a B. Go all the way up to B flat. We can make that work. Now that doesn't sound musical, but theoretically it works, right? So that's gonna be our second pass though is, uh, or I'm sorry, our third pass, third passing movement is chromatic movements. And then uh, one other place where we can use those chromatic movements is going to be uh, at the end of the chorus. So, oh, oh, how I love me. Sus. Me. Me. First. Love me. Um, so, at the very end of the chorus, we do seven, three, six. to the six uh seven three six normally i'll go six dominant kind of walk it up so if we're gonna play a six dominant chord same thing we can walk into that six dominant chord chromatically 
from above or below. So seven, three, six. Right? So we know we're walking into the sixth chromatic or the sixth dominant chord. I might go from the seven. Seven, flat seven, all using all dominants. Or oh how I love G. Five, six. All right, so that's another way that we can use the, that chromatic pass, okay? Let's dive into the last two. All right, so passing movement number four is going to be a walk up or walk down, however, however you wanna use it, whatever direction you wanna go in. Uh, but it's really common gospel movement. Um, it's not really complex. I just love this, love this progression. And so we're about to talk about it today, all right? Um, so here it is right here. Because he And all it is is two, three, four. But two as a half diminished, three chord as a half diminished, four as a minor six. All right, and then this really usually walks you to the five, or you could even walk it into the um, to the flat five. So B, cause he first. So with this, um, pretty much we're just leaving the scale temporarily. We're kind of switching up the song, uh, or not the song, we're switching up the chord uh, qualities just to give us an out sound, right? But it's very it's very subtle. B. So I could play like a regular two. Three, four, five, or, or B. We're just walking it down in the opposite direction. So two, three, four, four, three, two. Um, you could even invert it and do like a sharp five, five, four. Right. Um, all of these are the. It's essentially the same progression. It's just you can take. There's like a rule of inversions that you can use in your in your bass where if this is my chord that I'm playing, the first chord that I'm playing, I can use any of these notes to start the bass line on. So like this is B flat half diminished, so I could start on the one. And then we're going here. There's a G flat in this chord, right? So I could play a G flat over this. And then there's an E in this chord. Play an E in the bass, so we could do something like. Uh, that's the same progression as, right? Or whatever, whatever works best for you, whatever you like. Okay, so that's um, passing movement number four. All right, so the very last gospel passing chord that we have for today is going to be. A diminished chord, and uh, most of the time, you know, in the gospel context, we're going to use a diminished to pass grammatically. But uh, I just wanted to use like some diminished movements that maybe aren't used as frequently. Um, so let's talk about it. So let's jump to the chorus there. Is a name, or sorry, the verse there. Is a name I love to hear. I love to sing His praise. It All right, so there's the verse. There is a name I love to Right, so uh, the in the verse we have there is a name. Normally we just do one, five, I love to hear the one, right? One, five, one. Um, but something different that we can do that 
I've been experimenting with lately is a diminished major seventh chord. So think about a regular diminished triad. You got, uh, uh, actually, let's go to flat. A regular diminished triad is going to be root, minor third, and flat of fifth, right? But if we add a major seventh onto the diminished chord, this gives us a really dissonant chord called a diminished major seventh. This can be used as a passing chord. So instead of playing like a fully diminished or a half diminished, we can do a diminished major seventh chord, all right? And so I like to try to find places in songs where the melody is at, and I will use the melody as the major seventh and build a diminished major seventh chord around that. So I know C is my, I'm gonna, C is the melody line, so I'm gonna make that the major seventh of the diminished chord that I wanna play. So in this case, one, two, three, four. Four is D flat, I can play D flat diminished with a C, that'll be the major seventh of D flat. That gives me this crazy sounding chord. So there is a name. So there, you can use it there. Um, so just a great chord that really will catch catch people off guard. Uh, I think something that's not used as frequently and sounds really dissonant, really tense, and makes resolution sound beautiful. Okay, so there's your diminished seven. And then one other kind of way to use diminished chords um, for like, I guess in a more intermediate to advanced approach is in your seven, three, sixes. So if we got, there is a name. Uh -huh. So another thing that we can do for our diminished chords is whenever you're playing a diminished chord, it can be a fully diminished or like in the case of a seven, three, six, we can make our diminished chords extended. So here's our seven chord in the key of A flat. And instead of just playing A6, seven, right? We can add extensions. Main extension is gonna be the ninth and the 11th, right? So ninth for my G, uh, half diminished chord is gonna be an A, the 11th is going to be a C. And like in this case, it works really well because the, the melody line is at a C anyway. So like the melody line naturally adds that extension. But I think this just adds some fullness to these chords, right? Uh, so it sounds, that's a really funky chord. It sounds like music. Oh, it sounds like music in my ear. Okay, so just two different ways that you can use diminished chords in a more intermediate to advanced way, maybe something new that you haven't tried before. So experiment with these five gospel passing progressions and chords and movements. See how you can add them to your playing. See how you can add them to songs that you already know that maybe you're looking uh, to spice up a little bit. You're looking to add some extra uh, flavor to these songs. Um, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, give me some suggestions on what you want to see next, whether it be song breakdowns, whether it be theory, technique, whatever it is that you got, whatever it is that you wanting to learn in your musical journey, let us know. We're here to help in any way possible. All right, have a blessed day. I'll see y'all in the next lesson.